Hey, hey everyone, it's Michelle Balasari with In the Hive with Michelle B. This is my place to talk about all things marketing in your real estate business, including social media platforms you might want to consider being on, Instagram tips, personal branding, how to become a local influencer, content creation, and beyond. I interview industry influencers who have a finger on the pulse of what's going on in real estate across the country and globally. I am a solo agent and I am working with buyers and sellers. So I am in the middle of many of the things that you all are also in the middle of. I am with Real Broker LLC based um, here in Boca Raton, Florida. I am a South Florida agent that loves working with your referrals. So keep that in mind. If you want to connect, feel free to connect with me on Instagram at the Michelle B or sipsocialcell.com, which is my website, and I have a blog there. You can also connect with me on TikTok and also on Clubhouse, and that handle is also at the Michelle B. If you're looking for more videos and you're a visual person, uh, go on over to my YouTube channel. I definitely have uh, some great video trainings there, and I share my podcast episodes there as well. So if you're ready to get started, I would love for you to jump on in and hear our latest episode and feel free to subscribe to the podcast. I have new podcasts a couple times a month and I think you're really going to enjoy them. So if you're ready for today's fabulous episode, let's get started. Hello. Hey, okay. We got it. <laughs> we got it. See, yeah. it's so, well, it's, this is exactly why people cannot freak out when things don't go the right way because you just work through it right sure sure <laughs> and we've got time right i know welcome welcome we're gonna make sure we're not crooked here there we go welcome welcome thank you thank you for having me michelle how are you i'm doing great i'm so thrilled to have you on in the hive today because this has been a special like month and a half for me because I did move over to Real Broker in March. And I was so impressed with your um, graciousness and hospitality and the entire culture of the company. I thought, well, I would love to have you come join us. So I, I appreciate you joining today. And I'm just going to share who you are. Um, this is Tamir Oleg. He is the CEO and founder of Real Broker. This is the new brokerage I went to, guys, after nine years at my previous brokerage. Um, he has a degree in engineering. He loves tech, and he has an extensive background in real estate. So from there, I'm going to lob that over to you so you can tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Um, so hi, everyone. And thank you for being uh, here. And Michelle, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. And we're thrilled to have you uh, joining the family. And I, I, I love your energy. And I love uh, uh, following your Instagram, you know, seeing all those beautiful Florida scenery. Um, but um, yeah, I've, I've been in real estate for about 16 years. I've been kind of on and off between construction, real estate investments and technology. Um, and at some point in 2013, when I sold my previous company that focused on multifamily investments in Texas, uh, I found myself with a lot of passion for real estate, a lot of passion for helping people. Um, very intrigued about why hasn't technology really impacted real estate more. And again, we're talking about 2013, so it evolved since then. But back then, uh, technology was kind of only Zillow and Trulia and, and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and I said, you know, let's see what I can do, uh, in order to, to kind of do something in that space. And, uh, and one day I was diving into the real estate brokerage industry and I really re realized a few things that caught my eye. I realized that most agents, um, are working for traditional brokerages. Most of them are underserved, uh, Consumers want to work or want the experience of using agents in the process. So you see that the percentage of home buyers and home sellers that are using agents is decreasing in the past 15 years or so. So that's a clear sign that consumers understand the value of working with agents. 
And at the same time, I also understood that the traditional brokerage model with those brick and mortar locations, with the lack of, of automation, with um, the, the huge overhead and, and expenses, that's, that's just not sustainable. And as long as consumers want to pay less and they, ex they, they expect a different kind of experience, agents and brokerages will have to evolve. And at that point, we, my co-founders and I said, you know, there's an opportunity here to create a brokerage that serves agents um, in a different way, provides a different experience, a better experience, um, the most awesome experience possible. And at the same time, acknowledges the fact that agents are independent contractors, they're small business owners, and they should be entitled to leaving more money in their pockets. And we as a brokerage um, should create the financial opportunities for the agents as well. And, and that's how we founded Real back in uh, 2014. And since then, Real has taken, taken over my life. Um, <laughs> so that, that, that's on the professional side. Uh, on the personal side, I'm, uh, I'm married. I have four beautiful kids. Um, I, I'm kind of really enjoying the life that, I, uh, that I'm really fortunate to have. I'm doing what I love. I'm working with people that are extremely smart, extremely kind, and uh, I just feel extremely fortunate. Well, I appreciate everything that Real has put together. And I know there's a lot of things coming up too. Um, as a former pharmaceutical rep, I'm always interested in what's going on in the pipeline. What's the next thing? And one of the things that um, intrigued me about real, as I, I was saying earlier, um, I'm midlife. I'm going to be 59 on Sunday. I'm a, I'm a April Aries girl. And I've always said to my midlifers in particular out there, don't be afraid of making a change. Don't be afraid of pivoting. Don't be afraid of a next chapter. Don't stay someplace that isn't serving you. And if you feel unappreciated, um, then you have to rethink where you're going to go. Where do you want to have your next legacy in real estate? And I really, this opportunity kind of came out of left field. It didn't take too long to think about it because it checked so many of my boxes. So one of the things that I like is that this company believes in um, legacy, passive income, and ownership. So talk to us a little bit about that. Um, sure. And, and happy birthday, by the way. And I'll, I'll make Thank sure... You. I'll make sure I, uh, I reach out on Sunday. Um, Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, back in 2017, I remember that I was thinking that, you know, at the end of the day, we're building a business here and we're building an asset. And if that asset and if this building, this business that we're building becomes massively successful, as we believe it will be, then typically the only ones to benefit from it is the founders, the, the team, and uh, the investors who back the company. Um, and I was thinking that this is simply not right because as, as I see it, there are three parties here contributing to, to that um, building process and that success that, that's happening. And first and foremost, it's the agents, it's the team that we have here at Rio, and it's the investors who put the money to actually help us build everything. And at, back then in 2017, I went to my board and my investors and told them, I want to do something which is very unusual and I want to start rewarding our agents with stock options because back then we were a privately held company. I want to give the agents stock options for their contribution in growing the company. So every time an agent uh, closes a deal, um, attracts another agent to the company or reach their cap, we will give them stock options. And, and this way, agents will really, on one hand, feel as if they're a part of, of this family and this company. And at the same time, we as a broker should be responsible for our agents' futures. So very often, you know, agents live paycheck to paycheck or commission to yep. commission, and you don't put money, uh, you don't do anything towards retirement. And I felt responsible for our agents' futures and I wanted to create financial assets for, for our agents. Um, and I was extremely happy and surprised that 
the reaction at the board level was, yes, let's do it. There were no questions, no, yeah, maybe we should think about it. Everybody was on board. Um, and um, at some point in 2019, I realized that having stock options in a private company is great. At the same time, if we can somehow turn those stock options or equity into actual dollars for our agents, it will be amazing for them. And we decided to take real public and it was earlier than most companies would do. We were still a small company back then. Uh, I just want you to understand that becoming a publicly traded company means that it's a costly process. Um, the ongoing costs are higher and it adds more strain on the company itself. And still we decided to do that. This is how much we believe that our agents should benefit from, from all of this. And we went, went uh, moved forward. And uh, in June of 2020, Real became a publicly traded company. And I'm really thrilled to see the kind of impact it has on, on our agents. And I'm, I'm actually starting to hear stories of agents accumulating uh, stocks and, and, and wealth. And I'm pretty sure that we will be able to change thousands of lives through that. Um, so for me, equity is an amazing piece of the puzzle and it's a must have. And I think that if an agent works with a brokerage and they don't have that, they're missing out on something which could be life changing, not, not less than that. Well, and now that we're public, where is the stock traded? C could you repeat? You were cutting out a little bit. I said, uh, we're publicly traded. Where is the stock traded at? So currently the, the stock is trading on, on two venues. One is the uh, Toronto Stock Exchange Venture under the symbol REAX. At the same time, it's trading on the OTCQX, which is a, an American marketplace under the symbol REAXF. I will go even further and say that as an American company, as a tech company, we see ourselves naturally trading on a major US exchange, meaning NASDAQ, uh, probably, um, and and this is where real belongs, and this is where I think we will be trading um, at some point. There's there's a limit to what I can disclose, but uh, I can only say that right. this is where we see ourselves. Belonging. I love this, and again, forward thinking. And so, when you are with a forward thinking company, the opportunities are so endless. One of the takeaways I've had so far is the collaborative nature of the agents that I've connected with on the app that we use, which is awesome, by the way, uh, in our Facebook groups, and just in general. If I need help with something, I reach out to agents and everybody's very helpful. I'm also finding the referral community to be very strong and thriving, which I really, really appreciate being in South Florida. And that's, I think, a big benefit to a lot of agents that that arena tends to get a little crowded in different um, companies. And this has been a real fresh perspective uh, for me. How many agents do we have approximately right now? So we're very, very close to 2000. Um, yeah. and, and that's, a, that's about a hundred percent growth from, from 12 months ago. Um, I have to, yeah. to comment on what you said about the collaboration and that community that we're building very often when people think about technology, they think about eliminating the human aspect of the business. Um, and I think that there's a tremendous opportunity in our space, in the real estate market in general, to create a different kind of experience for the home buyers and home sellers. Because on the one hand, home buyers and sellers are clearly saying that they want the experience of working with agents. And at the same time, something is broken. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity in creating an amazing home buying and home selling experience for agents and for consumers, but for those consumers that are using agents. And we can do that through technology without eliminating the the human aspect of it. So I think that this is one of those opportunities where um, technology can assist the human or the person that's actually facilitating the, the uh, home buying and home selling process and but to creating 
something which will benefit with consumers. And, and this is what we will be trying and are trying to do. Well, it's a breath of fresh air. And I, I have been in real estate since 03. I'm one of those agents. I've been in real estate since 03. Um, it's a breath <laughs> of fresh air, trust me. <laughs> I, never, I never use that, by the way. I never use that when I'm talking to other agents. I'm just making fun of myself. Um, which is why I'm also getting new headshots and branding stuff. My daughter's a photographer because, you know, I don't wanna, I want to, I want people to know it's me. Um, we also have, um, you know, this, a really good mission statement, which is really about being kind. And can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, one of our uh, core values is work hard, be kind. And uh, it came out of a process, a pretty long process that we deal, did with the entire team and with our brokers and with our agents as well, trying to understand exactly what are we standing for. And, and one of the things in, that came up was work hard and be kind. And, and I think that this is exactly what's happening within Rio. We attract people who work hard and at the same time are kind to each other. And this is the kind of DNA that, that we have within the team and within the agent community that we have. And this is what probably sets, up, sets us apart in many, many cases. Um, and you mentioned the word community. So the community at Rio is a community of hard working professionals who are also leading with kindness, kindness to one another, kindness to our clients, uh, and, and just, you know, trying to understand that there's another way of doing business. In, in many markets, real estate is a cutthroat business, and I believe that you can achieve the same kind of performance and, and goals and targets, and even more with kindness. And, um, and this is one of the, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm enjoying so much at Rio because we've just attracted the right kind of, so kindness is, is a yeah. huge word in the company. I know it's not very common in this world, but I think there's an opportunity to change that as well. Well, one of the things too is um, with my brand, So Boca, that is a creative brand. It's my personal brand. My broker is Real Broker. Uh, it's been very easy to cross-pollinate the two. And one of the things that I see, and, and there were a few of us that came over from Remax, all of us tend to be creatives. Some of us are social media influencers. <laughs> and what's nice, though, is that we all share. So I have niches that I work in, like probate and seniors downsizing and I, I know how to do a personal blog and build a brand and I'm a, a little handy with Instagram. And these are things that I can share with agents that come on, you know, on, with me. And I know that the other agents that I'm friends with have their skill sets, some in video, uh, some in uh, Facebook ads, some in um, running Facebook groups. We all have these fun, creative sides to us that now we can really like pull this together and say, we're going to help you, you know, and it's, and that's it because that's, we come from that, that realm. And I think that's important for agents to know. And it, it really truly is a breath of fresh air. Um, I know your time is limited today, so I'm going to uh, throw you a couple of quick questions and then if you have some final words to wrap up um we'll do that does that sound good sure Go okay ahead. um one of the things i've been asking my guests on in the hive is best advice you ever got in business and worst advice so what's the best advice and the worst advice you ever got <laughs> um well two things um first I have a really bad memory. So even if I did get any advice, good or bad, I just don't remember. So I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you on this one. Um, I, I think when it comes to bad advice, in general, I like to make my own mistakes. So I, I, even if I hear any piece of advice, I still follow what I thought is right. Um, just, just because again, I make mistakes and I like making my own mistakes and taking responsibility and, and you know, getting the, the pain that, that's associated with making your mistakes, but uh, that's, that's the way I'm wired. Uh, so I, I cannot recall 
any uh, good or bad advice. I, I think I did get some suggestions. You know, people have something to say all the time, and uh, yeah, um, but nothing worth mentioning at this point. So I would say, good advice is follow your instinct, follow your gut. That is something sure. I do frequently. Like coming over to real, that was gut. After I check, 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 and literally, um, my friend Ramsey was the one who brought it to my attention, and within what was it a week or so not even it just did and i went got got yeah okay i'm good because i do execute quickly some people take longer i'm the type of person when i go get a car i know what i want i don't need to like shop it i'm ready to go and that's how i was ready um so the other question i like to ask my guests is if you could have a meal with anyone dead or alive who would it be? And it could be multiple people because everybody's like, I can't pick one. And what would your meal be? Um, I would probably want to have dinner with my grandparents um, whom I miss. My grandparents survived the Holocaust. They went through hell in order to immigrate to Israel and, and build families. Um, and I, I just cannot imagine what they, they went through. And uh, I appreciate everything that they've done. Uh, I was very close to them when I was a, a young boy. Um, and I just wish to have another opportunity to sit with them and, and kind of tell them how, how the family that they started evolved and where we are right now. I would probably be having a chicken soup. Uh, I hate soup, by the way. I don't I don't eat soup, but, but I remember that they did. So I'll, I'll honor them and, and have a soup with them. Um, but yeah, just, just to have an opportunity to, to sit with those people that we really, all of us, um, yeah. are here because of. So yeah, they would be the I one. I love that. I love that. I would, I would want to sit down with my grandma because she was a great person. And, um, and I appreciate um, the answer that you just gave. I think that's lovely. Um, any last words, any parting words you'd like to give to anyone who's watching or listening? Because this will be on In the Hive and on the podcast on YouTube. It'll be out there. Sure. Um, so I, I guess um, mainly there would be agents listening or watching right now. And I never tell anything um, about real, which, which is in the line of, you know, we're best, we're the most, we're the largest or anything like that. No, th this, is, this is not who we are. We're just trying to create an amazing experience for agents, an amazing collaborative environment, and just take care of your futures. And, and if you want to take the time and explore us um, and, uh, you know, give us the opportunity to build your future together, then we'll be thrilled and, and you have my commitment that we will go above and beyond to make it as enjoyable and amazing as possible. And, um, and Michelle, thank you very much for, uh, for the time. I enjoyed speaking and, um, and I'll reach out on Sunday to say happy birthday. Oh, thank you. I have to tell you guys, um, I like to make sure that wherever I'm doing, I can speak authentically on um, as many of you know, I have my other Instagram account at Soboka and I work with some brands and whatnot. Um, my onboarding process was painless. It was so easy. Um, if I had a question, it was answered. The support, it was answered. Uh, setting things up on Skyslope, easy breezy. My broker, fantastic. The support from everybody thus far has been kind friendly, and very, very easy, which made this trans transition very easy. And I think that's the biggest fear that agents have. Um, we get stuck in a rut. We get used to being comfortable. That's how we are as humans. Um, but when you have an opportunity, especially, and I'm saying this to my midlifers too, because, you know, um, we need passive income. We need different funnels. We need to be able to have a great real estate company to work with and for and then we need some other things and i just think it's a huge opportunity 
for any agent that's really interested in making a change right now. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me. I'm happy to help help you out. Um, and thank you so much again, uh, Tamir. This was fantastic. I appreciate your time today. And there is a big time difference because you're in Israel. So no, I, um, I'm actually in New York. This is our oh, New, you're York in New York office. Oh, yeah. even better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you're in New York. Yay. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So thanks again, everyone. And um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Tamir. We'd be happy to answer anything for you. Sure. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of In the Hive with Michelle B. If you are interested in joining me as a guest, send me a DM on Instagram at the Michelle B. You can jump in on any of my clubhouse sessions also at the Michelle B. I look forward to sharing more marketing, branding, social media tips with you every month. And thanks again for sharing this podcast. And if you like it, please feel free to give me a five-star review on iTunes. I will see you soon.